I hate an I told you so bitch, but sometimes you just gotta be like I told you so. can't see my face but I just came on here to sing Keisha and JR count your mother effing days like holding someone hand when you have a girlfriend it's called cheating JR you're not dumb so stop acting like it stop fucking acting like you're dumb and Cam and Gabby knew something was going on because now all of a sudden y'all close it wasn't close like this a year ago. Oh, y'all gonna use the fact that she gave you a bone marrow as a reason why y'all should be close like that? Disrespecting boundaries, bitch. I'm your boyfriend and I'm your girlfriend. Cut that shit the fuck out. I'm watching All American Homecoming. Okay, my ass kicked on the pro circuit. You said I was representing Brixton. I'm not doing it well. And it's embarrassing. She, she, she feeling a little iffy because she went pro instead of staying at school to finish out her career because Simone took her spot. And she realized she's not that good of a tennis player and they kicking her ass out there. I mean, when you want to abruptly leave in the middle of the semester because somebody else took your spot, it's giving you not as good as you thought you were, sweetie. Yes. Great character development, but you're trash, Thea. Secondhand embarrassment is when she sung that song to Damon. And two, for all of that, they could have just kept Thea with Damon. They both could have been pros. She could have been in Dominican Republic supporting that man because him and Simone did not even need to be together. And she said about something that they owed it to themselves to get together because they knew they had a little bit of chemistry. You seen a fine man and he seen a fine woman and y'all had sexual attention. That is all. Simone was better off with Lando because he's more attentive to her, to, to her needs. Like he literally stopped everything he can he can to see how she feels. He think about he think about what she may feel before he even do something. Like Damon, he has not called or checked on her. Well, we wouldn't know. But he ain't even call her for her birthday. You see how long she went the first, the second episode after he done left? It made more sense for Simone to pick Lando because Damon, the, the person who was even playing Damon, left the show. So why would they even choose him in the first place knowing that he was not coming back? That was the most dumbest shit ever that they could have did. And then giving someone breast cancer? Giving small breast cancer was crazy. Let me do this. I'm trying to fill out an application to get a book scholarship. I'm going to get it. I hope so. Oh, my goodness. There's so many freshmen that I hope that they don't take up all the, um, the money for the textbooks. Textbooks is mad freaking expensive. I wish the books came with tuition. Came in it with the tuition. You pay your tuition and you get your books paid for it in the meantime. Like, can somebody cr create me a GoFundMe and just raise 50000 That'll help me. Just give me 50000 and that will help me. All that student loan stuff going away. I'm trying to hurry up and finish my master's. Y'all, y'all know what I'm so mad about? I wanted to go to NYU for graduate school so bad just to come and find out that starting 2026, they will be doing free tuition for families who make less than 100 k I could have went to NY, but the thing is, I would have had to sit out at least two years and a half. Who was doing that? Not the fuck me. I w I'm going to be, see, by the time 2026 even come, I'm probably going to be a semester away from graduating. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do for grad school graduation? I'm not going back to school no more. If I'm able to go back to school, it better be on a full ride scholarship to a school that I could go in person to to do my stuff. Oh my goodness, yeah. All right, I'll be right back. No, because I'm mad confused. They had JR kiss Keisha like two weeks ago when it was Thanksgiving. Kim 
Not Cam. Cam and Gabby wasn't like, y'all sneaking around? And they talk about some no. Y'all sneaking around? You better say yes. And then in the little clip, Cam told Keisha, he told Keisha something that made him happy in that moment. And she had to do something and fucking mess it up. She literally had to be like, JR and I kiss. Right when he's telling you that he just got signed? Oh, that bitch. That's why you can't dance. That's why you can't dance, Keisha. That's why you're not going to grad school. And JR, you definitely not about to go back and play baseball. Gabrielle, fuck him. When you see Keisha, mush on her forehead. Mush her. Because y'all just fucking addressed them. They said nothing's happening between them. And now they lying? They lying. You make me want to shout. What? That is crazy. That's crazy. All right, so I have a question to ask y'all. Do y'all want y'all kids to go to an HBCU or an Ivy League? Me personally, there's a hundred and something HBCUs. Pick one. Nah, I'm joking. If my child want to go to an HBCU or an Ivy League, that's fine, baby. Go be great where you are at. Make sure that when the time comes, you pick the best major for you as possible. That means, well, listen, look, if you go in there one year thinking that this is the major you want to do, and then you, have a, you do a whole 180 and think you want to do something different, you can do that, but don't be picking different majors like three different times. We need you in school and out so you can be. That sounds like pressure. I ain't going to put no type of pressure, but just know your mama right now it is September 2nd, 2024. Your mama got the got her bachelor's and she's going for her master's. Maybe by the time you come, she might be a little doctor. You might have to address me as Dr. Mom. And you might have to adjust your daddy as Dr. Dad. Delusional. But no, you can never be delusional. Manifestation. It works. Your mom and daddy are going to have the best education ever, and we're going to give you the best education. Education ever. Do y'all want y'all kids to go to private school? Like a a private elementary, middle school, high school. I feel like having being putting a child through anything private and not them being around the people that they should be around. Like it's good to have a, a mixture of knowing different people, diversity. But like you know what? I'm not even going to say too much. We'll cross that bridge when that comes. So, yeah. I want y'all to think about that question. Let me know what you think in the comments. Would you rather your kids go to HBCU or an Ivy League? Let me know. Oh, I was about to say, God damn, it's going to rain every day of the week. I forgot I was watching the Philly forecast. I couldn't find All, Americ um, All American Homecoming on for Baltimore on the TV, so I had to settle for Philly. But yeah, that's besides the point. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments. I'll be back. I'll be asking y'all some more questions. It's random. So get up to it and get to it. Your girl will be back to it. Period. Eight. You just ever go through moments where you realize things back in your childhood that you didn't think was crazy back then, but as you get older, you were like, that was fucking ridiculous. The fact that like going camping wasn't crazy i was a girl scout we went camping to learn how to survive in the wild just in case an apocalypse happened you know that's the vibe that was the vibe but one time we had a extracurricular activity that we need to do at girl scouts and they thought to put us in the boat the canoeing boat Luckily, there was another instructor there besides my mom, but my mom, the instructor, me, and five other little girls was crazy. I mean, it was actually two instructors. One was with the other girls, and then one was with me and mom. Like, that was fucking ridiculous. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I just realized at that time, 
I didn't know how to swim. So what would have happened if all of us fell in the water? How deep was the water? Can my mom, can my mom swim? Can the other, well, she got in the water. But still, you can know how to canoe a boat and still can't swim, or can you? I mean, but she was a Girl Scout leader, so she had to learn how to do the life. I mean, I don't know if my mother knew how to swim or not, but I know for a fact that I did not. And you know, with kids, they get scared of the water. So we didn't. We, we went out, we came back, got back to the deck, the dock first. But you know, kids don't listen. They get scared. And one person scared, the rest of the group is up from there. She said, you have to get up one at a time or else the boat will flip over. Now, okay, one by one, I was the first one to get up. I'm like, I'm going to just help the rest of everybody else come on a dock. Now, the next person, well, I think I should probably have been the last person to get up, being that my mom should have got it first, but I don't play about water, especially if I did not know how to swim. My mom got up, and another kid got up at the same time as my mom, so now the boat is... And then my mom is a little, uh, my mom is plus size. So she already was like balancing the boat. So imagine when she got up and the next person got up on the other side to weigh that part down. And the instructor is trying to guide my mom. Luckily that boat, the boat almost flipped over. It almost did. Because why kids don't ever listen? Why don't kids ever Listen, listen for the instruction. Follow the instruction. Why is it always that one person that infiltrate the whole other, the whole other kids into fear? I tell you that much. I was not jumping in the water behind no kid because if I'm trying to get you, I'm not gonna say that. I'm honestly just glad we don't do that no more. I genuinely did not like going camping. I went because unfortunately I had to go. I was on, I was in a Girl Scout troop, and then I was also my mom's help helper when the other parent backed out, so I would have to go. I did not enjoy camping at all. Once you get older and you don't like bugs, a whole new world opens up. I'm afraid of butterflies. I have a phobia of butterflies, and I have a phobia of lightning bugs. If the lightning bugs are outside in the street and they come out at a certain time, I will not leave the house until the lightning bugs clear up. Also. If I have no choice but to be outside during the lightning bugs, I promise you I'm going to stand where the light is because they only go in the dark. They don't come to the light. If that means there's light all in the street, I'm walking up the street. I'm walking in the middle of the street, up the block. Those two I do not play about. And I don't, know, I don't even know when the fear of lightning bugs even started because I used to run around the block, run up and down the block with a water bottle full of lightning bugs. I don't know what happened, but I'm pretty sure it just changed my whole perspective. Because that's what happened with the freaking butterfly. Butterflies. Like, I was never fond of butterflies to begin with. But I went to the zoo and they had a butterfly exhibit. Now, they don't necessarily explain what the butterfly exhibit is. So, imagine going through the butterfly exhibit. Not knowing you got to wait for other people to move out the way. Because it's people looking at the different types of butterflies there is. And you realize you can't go nowhere because you can't push nobody out the way. And the butterflies are out in the open and they can fly anywhere. Imagine seeing that many butterflies at one time and that they can land on you. Panic attack. Panic attack everywhere. I was about 12 or 13 when that happened. I promise you, if I seen a butterfly outside right now and it was coming towards me, I would be lying the other way. I would try not to make a scene, but for those of you that know me, no, I'm going to make a scene. It just better not land on me. It's going to have to die. But I just don't understand how you outside in your home environment and you want to land on me. That, like, I just don't get it. Like, you are comfortable outside of your house, but then you come into my house and you're trying to make me uncomfortable. That shit don't even make any sense. That don't make any sense to me. This fucking shit is annoying. 
All right, I gotta go. Bye. The one thing I always loved to do when I was in high school was go to the college room and sit and look up the schools to see what type of majors that they have and see what I could potentially major in and what my career would be like. And to this day, I still have fun doing that. It don't even matter if I'm going to the school or not. I just want to see the majors that they have there and what I could have potentially majored in had I went to that school. Because I feel like applied psychology is cool. I mean, it's probably applied psychology in, in, in several schools. But it's like, I'm trying to figure out if there's a difference between psychology and applied psychology. Like, regardless of the fact, it's science. Like, it's science. Thinking about the way people talk, why they act the way they do, um, the behaviors, um, the trauma surrounding the behaviors, what trauma is bringing out the behaviors, the environmental, uh, the, the social cues, you know, everything plays a fact into that. And that's science because that deals with the brain, the human brain. Um, but yeah, like even regardless whether I was getting a um, master's or a PhD, I still take the time out to go on the computer and look at the programs that they have. Like right now, the school I'm looking at is John Hopkins. And this is the graduate programs. Now, if I didn't go to the school that I'm at right now for graduate school, I thought about going to John Hopkins. But then it's like several different, it got Peabody Institute, School of Nursing, School of Medicine, Whiting School of Engineering, School of Education, Cary Business School. See, School of Education is you becoming a teacher. Special Education Council, Administration, Leadership. So if I want to do something with my degree in teaching, you go to school of education. I don't want to. I don't want to be a professor. I don't want to teach the students. Although it would probably be good to have. I mean, I could probably do both. I don't. I don't think I want to be a professor. Like I don't think I ever want to teach. Search all graduate programs. We're gonna search all graduate programs. And we're gonna start with masters, and we're just gonna scroll down to psychology. Psychology starts with the S. It might have a little counseling. No, that's civil climate clinic. So they got clinical. I don't even know how to say that word. They got see. I could have did clinical mental health. Counseling post master certificate. They got cognitive science. They got, uh, let's see what clinical mental health counseling is post master certificate. <laughs> so that means if I wanted to, like, once I'm done with my yeah, master's at school that I'm at right now, maybe I might be able to enroll in John Hopkins School of Education. It says, our post-master certificate program prepares candidates for licensed practice in clinical mental health counseling. The program is designed for students who have previously completed a master's in counseling and wish to complete the academic requirements for their clinical professional counselor license in Maryland. I would need to do New York because I don't want to stay in Maryland and work. I want to go back to New York and work. I feel like people in New York need it the most, the people in Maryland. But then I can't do that. I can't compare who needs what the most because there's a... There's a, a the black community needs help regardless. The black community needs help regardless. Mental mental health is everything. And we need to start now with helping people with mental health. I don't know. I, that just, I just pulled it out my ass. That didn't even make sense. I don't think it made sense, but yeah. I just had to come on here and say, Ice Spice and Cleo. I gotta take this out. It's going back and forth. Well, they're not, I don't know, they, they're not going back and forth. Ice Spice is no longer, no. Cleo's no longer Ice Spice friend because she felt like every single time she was around Ice Spice, she had to dim her light in order to make her feel better. Or Ice Spice dimmed her light to make herself feel better. You get what I'm trying to say? 
basically the light skinned girl with the dark skin side sidekick who is promised all these things but then nothing turns out the way because how do you invite somebody on tour a day before and tell and, and then they ask you all right so what do i have to pay for do i have to pay for anything let me know the details before i just up and go on tour with you and then gonna tell her she cool she, she don't gotta worry about anything and then come to find out all of a sudden i'm not in the budget what the fuck you asked me to come on this tour for if i wasn't in the budget or if i gotta do this stuff on my own the fuck like if you going on tour and I'm going to be the opening act for you, should I not fall into the budget? Like, you supposed to be my friend. But the thing is, how long do you let somebody play in your face before you take action and move on from the friendship? Because I feel like from the stuff that she said, so much shit was happening in that friendship and she still continued to be that girlfriend. Like, is it because Ice Spice is signed to Nikki and the opportunities was coming in, so she was like, she don't want to stop being her friend or take it to heart because she want to stick around for the opportunities that may come. But if she's literally, literally playing in your face. I ain't even watched none of the videos. I started watching, I think I watched the first part, and I didn't even watch the next part because... The, the next couple parts because one person playing your face you either correct the behavior and then the second time come and they still doing the first thing after you try you tried to correct their behavior they don't give a fuck that you tried to correct it or you gave them a boundary there's no longer you no longer need to be friends with them you let her slide and she started ice and she started ice skating you give a bitch ice skate and she's gonna skate point blank period and now, Ice Spice, Ice Spice and, and Cleo, before Ice Spice drastically lost all that weight, she was about to, she was thick, but almost like, um, I'm not sure if they were like the same size or stuff. Like both thick, like body built the same. Um, and now Ice Spice lost all that weight and now she body shaming her. How you body shaming somebody that used to be a friend? Oh, right. It was just, you just had her as a friend, but then now all of a sudden she not, she telling her side of the story and you're going to body shame her. But see, that's the thing with people. You can't be friends with somebody who, who, who played in your face the first time because now there was somebody else on the outside, another friend of Ice Spice who they not friends no more and she exposed Ice Spice and the stuff that she was saying about Nikki. And then she also said that Ice Spice don't even like the other girl. She's only her friend to get back at her. And now look, she on Twitter like, I tried to warn you. But then even, even so, you can't just automatically come on the internet exposing somebody and then be like, yeah, she talking about you. This is the stuff she's saying about you. Because first of all, if you saying she's saying this about you, you sat right up under her and talk shit about the other girl too. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. And I'm like, Ice Spice and Cleo are no longer friends, so... When the other girl came to the internet, I, Cleo was having Ice Spice back and saying all these things about the girl and stuff. But it's like, I mean, all three of y'all shitty people, if you want to be real, y'all all sit up under each other and talk about the next person to each other. And y'all hold on the receipt just in case one of y'all get into it real bad so y'all have the, the right to expose anything and I feel like if even if you was friends no matter how bad the, unless there's a pattern of behavior and then somebody trying to play with you maybe maybe you can bring out the text messages and stuff but I don't know because I wouldn't even do that like how how people be friends with people and then because it's like next thing you know the internet is all up on a, not the internet, the underwear is all up on the internet, you dirty, this is what your underwear look like. So you went into the hamper, you went into the hamper and took a picture of somebody dirty ass drawers and the dirty clothes and then to try to go on the internet and say they dirty? You're not, you're not, very, you're not very bright, are you? Like, 
I just don't understand that. That never ever made sense to me. So you waited for this girl to leave. You was in the comfort of her home and you seen her underwear and you thought to take a picture of it and it posted like, yeah, bitch, I got you. Like as a gotcha movie, at your got at I'm having a brain fart. As a gotcha moment. Now who's really dumb? Ain't nobody else really dumb but except for you, because you took your fingers and you put it in the hamper. And said, yeah, yeah, your underwear dirty. I mean, duh, it's in the dirty clothes. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know. Cleo, Ice Spice. I mean, maybe they deserve each other because they obviously probably just alike. But like, how do you sit around in somebody's face who's playing, who's literally playing with you? At what point? In the friendship, when you start feeling like the girl is being mad weird towards you and you're going to stay in the friendship, when has that ever worked out for anybody? Because the person know they being weird and they know you know they being weird. I'm going to be right back. Men who think just because they provide for the household... And because they provide for the house so that they get to cheat, it's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. That's fucking crazy. So because you provide for the household and you make the house a, a warm place for your wife and your kids to be comfortable, it's peaceful. You decide to go outside to find chaos? Because you provide, you, and it's peaceful in the house, you want to go outside and create chaos so that your house can now no longer be peaceful and it's just going to be full of chaos. You love messiness. You, you love messiness. You love to be messy. You don't like the quiet. Because if you like the quiet, you wouldn't even go outside to cheat. You would be like, you know what? This time in my life, I feel like I'm providing. I got the type of wife that I need, the children that I got. We live in this nice little area. You want to go outside and find chaos? Okay. Nothing will be peaceful from now on. And don't get mad when shit don't, get peace, don't become peaceful no more. You want to go outside and cheat. So that means... We that you and I are causing problem, havoc. Of oh, the house finna be on go tonight. Kids, make them make a lot of noise. Y'all don't need to go to bed. Y'all bedtime is one o'clock in the morning. Make as much noise as you want. Your daddy like chaos, so we gonna give him chaos. True, so true. When all he had to do was not cheat. I seen a TikTok video, and I just had to come on here and say that my mind is got a ton of things going bro like and all i can do is pick up the camera and, and, and talk about it with y'all but yeah i ain't even say welcome back to my channel or nothing hey y'all it's siobhan that should sound crazy hey y'all it's siobhan danielle welcome back to my channel if you're new here you just heard my name if you're returning what's goody I'm about to take my hair out. This looks crazy. Like my scalp is oiled. It, I put oil and I put the blue magic hair grease in it. But this type of style, you don't keep in your hair for that long. Because the rubber bands right here. And then my sister, I needed one of them little clips to go right here. But after my, first of all, my hair is, is kinky, coily. So any type of frizz, if the hairstyle becomes old, it's going to start to frizz up and it's going to start to get curly. Is it going to stay in the rubber band? No. But what I need to do is take my hair out, wash it, and then I'm going to try to do bantu knots on my hair. Do I even have stuff for the bantu knots? I don't have no leave-in conditioner, no nothing. I'm just going to use the regular conditioner. Or do I even have gel? Mm, I don't have no gel. And I'm actually so mad because right around the corner they had a big ass beauty supply store and they decided to change it into a smoke shop 
really what the approach. fuck be wrong with the government? Why do they keep approving me. for smoke shops? You know how many smoke shops is in New York down a block in the vicinity of my house? It's like six. So, how much you figure we cleared off all these dumb coppers anyway? The exact amount almost doesn't matter, darling. I'm sick of this shit. Right all right. Gotta go. Nah, I need to figure out how I'm gonna get my textbooks for class. I mean, I did. I finished. I did the application for the um book scholarship, so I did turn that in this morning. I need to email the lady and see if she got the application, so that hopefully today is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Hopefully by Friday I'm able to go pick up my books. It's like I need eight books. Eight books is fucking crazy, and I need a, a workbook, a workbooklet. What the fuck? I'm, I need to stop cursing. School, this is the second week of school. Second week. I need to log on. I need to see what assignments need to be done. I need to see what readings. I need to email my professors and ask them if there's a way I can get the PDF version of the books. But I'd rather have the book in my hand because I like to write down my stuff. Even if I have to go on um, PowerPoint. Even if I have to go on PowerPoint and what you call it. Yo, my fucking widow's peak itch. This shit itch so much. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to figure all of that out. Maybe tomorrow. Well, when I come back from dinner, open that computer and get that shit started. Reading, writing, all that other stuff. And I need two. I need two more notebooks. I got two notebooks. Well, technically, I got three. One book was already used, and there's a whole bunch of other pages left. So I counted as three, and I need another book. I wish I was able. I wish there was, um, I mean, we do have a grocery store on campus, so I'll probably go to campus tomorrow and go to the, um, the little pantry thing that they have. Not only do they, they do, like, they sell, like, toilet tissue. Um, detergent, hopefully some fabric softener. I need deter more detergent. I need fabric softener. I need um, dryer sheets. I need paper towels. I need more tissue. Um, what else do I need? I need uh, dish detergent. Liquid detergent. Cleaning supplies. All of that stuff is what I need. And I'm actually happy that I don't have to go to the um, buy that stuff from Walmart or anything. And I hope they have it at campus. I'm going to have to wake up early and go to campus tomorrow. But I don't know what time it open and stuff. I'm going to need to take me several bags just in case. Yeah. So. And like... This, I've been trying to figure out a way to improve my channel, but really all I like to do is just pick up the camera and talk. That's all I like to do. I just like to pick up the camera and talk. I don't like, like vlogging, going places. I'll try to do a little bit of that, but sometimes I like to live in the moment so I don't bring my camera with me and I'll just, like, just, and sometimes when I go out, we just, just be sitting at the bar. And the people that I be sitting at the bar with, they all grown people. They don't want to be on no fucking camera. That's a boundary people have. You could bring the camera, but don't record me. Okay? Then I'll leave the camera at home. Because what the fuck I'm going to record? Me just drinking? The conversation that we be having needs to be on freaking YouTube. I feel like some people... Believe in conspiracy theories so much. And all I can do is entertain it when they talk about because what the fuck are you even talking about? Knock it off. Here, take the wheel. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be back. I'm just trying to understand because Ice Spice music is so fucking trash. Like, what? Like, she really blew up over just. Cause, like, look, I tried to listen to some of her music. I just couldn't do it. I had to turn that shit off. You thought I was feeling you? That nigga got munch. Eat, 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 yeah, eat for lunch. Yeah, my baddie, I get what I want. Like, what the fuck is that? You think you the shit? You not even the fart. No. 
What the fuck even is that? <laughs> no, but that whole situation where Ice Spice and Cleo really got me tight. Because Cleo, no, seriously. Why would you sit there and continue a friendship with somebody that is clearly being weird towards you? Like, she don't have no... She not helping you in no type of way. She's saying shit to you. Her team is saying shit to you. And you just going with the flow. If you don't take the bitch by her, her cheek and pinch that bitch and make it purple. Sometimes, I don't know, some of y'all might have a humiliation kink. Because I'm not going, first of all, I'm not even going on no tour a day before. And I got to pack all this shit and get this shit ready and stuff. And then, you telling me I'm going on tour with you. I have to make my own flyer announcing to the world that I'm going on tour with you. And I dropped a song. I'm supposed to be your friend and you not promoting my song or nothing? Mind you, wasn't she in the video? You could make appearances in the video, but you can't promote the song. It's giving... She know you right better than her, so she not even trying to put you on like that, so that you could blow up bigger than her, cause she know she you, cause she know you could rap. Bitch, you were signed to Nikki, which I don't even know why you even signed to Nikki, with all the little shit she had going on and who she, you know, married to. But you know, that probably don't have nothing to do with the label and the business going forward. So I mean. But they come to find out that she was talking shit about Nikki saying that she giving Nikki opportunities. I mean, because, I, no, like, when you think about it, I don't know. But, I mean, Nikki was still getting opportunities even before. I, that's the thing. I don't, I don't know. Like, there's been a, there's been a long, there's been a, like, a long time where I haven't really listened or watched or you know because I, I i'm not anymore well i don't know i don't know how to explain yes. it but Police. i'm trying to figure out if there was yes. even a yes, a time where that's nikki that's wasn't on the scene like i just can't even remember but then no ice spice came she signed ice spice they put out that mixtape there was the mix they put out before she signed the Nikki or right after she signed the Nikki. But then they did the Bobby, the Bobby World song. That shit was trash. It was featured on Barbie. I, and I said this before, Sweetie song, I'm a Bobby girl, should have been. That was way, the aesthetic was Sweetie was way more better. But being that Nikki claims herself as the Barbie, then it made more sense. But I don't know. Maybe if she wasn't, if Ice Spice wasn't signed to Nikki, I don't know, would Nikki have? But Nikki, Nikki is a brand within herself, and she's literally the Barbie brand, so I'm pretty sure she still would have. But I don't know. You signed to Nikki, so you got all these opportunities. Why you hate? Can't like why you? Why you just didn't put your friend on? Like you could have gave up, but then I don't like a bitch that do that because they had they got all these opportunities. They give you the opportunity as soon as you get make it big, they feel like they owe you owe them something, and that's what the whole that's giving what the whole situation is about. She feel like because she put Cleo on tour, it was giving her a little bit of opportunity, a little bit of um spotlight. She needs to be grateful, but bitch, you did the bare minimum. As a friend, you did the bare minimum. It wasn't even like, this my friend. This her first time on tour. She's opening up for me. I got you, period. I'm going to give you a budget on the stuff that you should have. If you don't have it, I'm going to try to see if I can get people to send you stuff. So that way, you won't be feeling left out. When it's time to go eat, we're going to eat. Like, is it that hard to put your friends on and to, like, make them feel comfortable and welcomed? It's not like, and to be honest, all of this could have been avoided. All of this could have been avoided going on the internet and all this other stuff. If she just would, if she just would have built up the courage to say something to her and her, 
in her face. Who gives a fuck about a reaction? Who gives a fuck about how the person will react in person? You letting them know how you feel. Don't let shit keep happening. You're not saying nothing. And then bring it to the internet. Now, if you said something and nothing has changed and you keep saying it and you feel like you have to go to the internet to see if you're bugging, I don't know. What y'all think? Let me know what the fuck y'all think because I don't know. The system will never know peace. Women and children, especially young girls, will always not be able to find peace. There's no, there should be no reason why there is a mother in jail for refusing to take her kids to therapy to reunite, to re, wait, reunite. Reunite with their father who raped them. The father is a police officer. I'm going to read it. Damn, where the fuck? Wow, neighborhood talk. Hold on. I'm going to read it to you. Because it don't even make no fucking sense. Crazy, former hero cop who's facing charges for allegedly raping his biological daughter and sexually assaulting his adopted daughters is out on bail. While his ex-wife is now locked up for refusing court-mandated reunification therapy. So she's in jail because she didn't follow through with the reunification therapy to reunite the father and the kids. Why would you want your kids? Why would the kids still want to be in contact with the very fucking person who literally sexually assaulted them? What the fuck is up? I mean, this is a man's world. So, the judges don't give a fuck about the girls. It's because he used to be a cop. And if he used to be a cop, that means he used to be good. He can always come back from this. No. No the fuck he cannot. You literally raped your biological daughter and sexually assaulted your adopted daughters. What the hell is going on? We've got a problem, sir. I literally cannot even fathom the thought. Like, you really want... To put them in therapy with the very own person that hurt them and then think that they would be okay. You're literally making them face their monster. They don't have to forgive that man if they don't if they don't want to. They don't ever have to talk to him. And y'all can't even be like she's keeping them away from their father. Good. He doesn't need to be anywhere around them. All he is going to do is get into their face, manipulate them gaslights them into making them think that what happened to them is their fault and that they asked for it. That is literally what abusers do. Narcissistic abusers. Like, what? Yo. This world is literally fucking dumb. Like, I'm still in like, I just need to pick up a book and just read on the minds. Because how can you, like, how does a counseling psychologist, clinical psychologist, uh, a psychiatrist, like, how can you look at a person, sit there and talk to a person, and discover that they have these thoughts of harming other people? Not just other people, their own flesh and blood. Like, how do you, how, like, I literally, how? I don't even really understand. I do not understand. What is, what is the trauma and what is the trigger that is causing them to want to do harm and that they don't see nothing wrong with what they are doing, that they are justifying everything that they are doing and switching it around and making it the victim's fault as to why they are doing it? Like, I, I just literally do not have the words. Can you believe him? How stubborn can one be? 
I really need to just pick up. I really need to just pick up a book and fucking read and and try to my best to answer my own question because how and why? What makes people do the things that they do? I understand it's trauma, hurt people, hurt people, but imagine people that never ever been hurt before. That never ever been through a situation. Nobody has ever put them through that. What makes them get older and be like, you know what? I want to do this. And they just become the person that they are. There has to have been signs. Whether it was, you know, unaliving animals. Maybe they didn't even unalive animals. Maybe as they got older, they were just curious to see how it would feel. They did it. And it just stuck with them. What is going on in this world? Like, the world has always been like this, but when does it ever get better? When does it ever get better? Like, how do people want to bring kids into this world? How do you even shelter kids from this? And then, on another side, there are kids who show this type of behavior early on. They don't even have to watch anything. They could just show this type of behavior early on. And it's up to you as the parent to not brush it aside and to get your child some fucking help. Before they get older and the thoughts that they once had as a child make its way into their head as an adult. And they just do it. What in the world is going the fuck on? Like, the fact they even let that man come out on bail to try to get him, get the ex-wife to put them in, and the kids in therapy to sit and talk about that type of stuff. Or to rehash. Like, why would you want a child to rehash her relationship with her father, who is the reason why she's going through this trauma? Yo. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I'm back in my room eating whatever the fuck they got. This is supposed to be a taco, and I decided to get French fries with it. I'm watching Takers, and that'll be it for tonight. I'll come on here and I'll pop my shit tomorrow about whatever is on social media, because that's all I do. Talk share. But yeah, that's neither here or there. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Answer them questions from the other clip on do you think you will send your child to HBCU or an Ivy League? Answer those questions and stuff. You can't really see me, but oh, here it is. Like I said again, my name is Siobhan Danielle. Welcome to the um the new people. And welcome back to the old. Bye.